At one point, Young Bands was slated to become the next superstar to make it out of SoundCloud, and for a while, he was on track to do so. From 2017 to 2018, in their seven month period, he had three Lyrical Lemonade videos, co signs from rappers like XXXTentacion, was mentored by Future, and it seemed obvious that Young Bands was about to blow up and hit the mainstream. However, years later, the hype for Bands has faded away. The rapper, once known for his consistency, has dropped once in the last two years, begging the question why would a rapper who's on the brink of becoming huge throw it all away? Well, what a lot a lot of fans don't know is during his prime, Young Bands got into multiple beefs, scammed his fans, was on house arrest for 4 years, and a couple of years ago, even allegedly snitched. My name is Rashaf Ashir and this is how Young Bands blackballed himself. And before we talk about how his career got derailed, how did it begin in the first place? Bands was somewhat of a prodigy. His song with Cardi, 4 Teaspoon, was made when he was 14 and he dropped multiple SoundCloud classics with the likes of XXXTentacion and Ski Master Slump God, which propelled him to underground stardom. And in 2018, it looked like Bands was ready to step into the mainstream. That year, Bands ended up being mentored by Future and affiliated with Free Bands. And after dropping 3 Lyrical Lemonade videos with the combined 60 million views and over 100 million streams, it was clear Bands was going places. But Bands was still a kid from the hood in Atlanta and he would do whatever he could to make money. And this past ended up biting him in the back. So the first fatal mistake Bands would make and jeopardize his career wasn't actually a beef. It was a legal situation that led to him being placed on house arrest for four years. One day in late 2015, Bands and his friends walked into a condo, kicked a door, and began ransacking a residence. The owner, scared out of his mind, ran to the balcony and called the police. Bands and his friends continued on, and the owner, he began to panic even more. While on the phone with the police, he told them he would jump, and he did. The balcony was three stories high. Bands and the rest of his friends finished the job and left, and apparently they had to pass the body while they drove off, and decided not to help. The man laid there all night, and by the time the morning came, let's just say he went to a better place. So for a couple of months, they laid low, but three months later, on February 16, 2016, they would all get arrested and get charged with the M-word. The whole time, Bands hadn't even turned 18, and was placed in juvenile detention. Luckily for Bands, he displayed excellent behavior and got out on house arrest, and soon after getting awarded house arrest, Bands was buzzing, but he couldn't do shows or accept any other offers to headline tour with other artists. So for the next few years, he was forced to sit in his house with his future unknown, and even said himself, it negatively affected his career. I can't perform like I want to, you know, can't go on no tours. I got invited to a couple tours I couldn't take, couldn't go to. That would have been a good, a good boost for my career, you know what I'm saying? To be out touring 30 different states with a, a a bigger artist. Which is true, he couldn't capitalize on his hype, but it wouldn't take long for bands to get distracted and began to beef with other rappers either. The first beef he got into was the man who was featured on his viral song, 4 Teaspoon, played with Cardi. It turned out young bands had never paid Cardi for his verse. The song had originally put bands on the map because of how hot Cardi was at the time, and Cardi was salty because he felt taken advantage of. So he told his friend Thousand Band Fani to help him get back against bands in person. Nigga on the uh, four tables, four tablespoons. You talking about, bro, this ain't even pay me for the feature for the four tablespoon, right? So you calling me, bro, let's, let's pull up and edit this shit out. So Cardi was about to put a hit on Bands for not paying for a feature. And that wasn't all. Fast forward a little bit, and Cardi was beefing with one of Bands' producers, Milan Makes Beats, who he also threatened. Milan and Bands were really tight at this time, and were working heavily. So Bands took Milan's side, and when Cardi took to Milan's Twitter DMs to threaten him, and Milan exposed him, Cardi would later call him a snitch. So Bands would go on live to defend his producer from Cardi, and explained his producer wasn't a snitch. Can't really call him a snitch. He just letting the situation be known for what it is. You know, like... That, that situation, you know what I'm saying? He ain't snitching. What is that snitch on? In reality, it was Cardi. He think Cardi snitching on himself, saying he gonna pull up on this in a DM. You snitching on yourself, goofy. Honestly. And explained that he didn't have real beef with Cardi in his eyes. Me and Cardi ain't really nothing going on. He just mad. Like, he just mad. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess the Milan situation. And that Milan was his brother. Milan, my bro. I'm right for who ride for me, you know what I'm saying, simple. Loyalty go a long way, you gotta remember that. Very, very, very wise words from Mr. Young Bands, but ironically, he did the same thing Cardi did to Milan, Steel Beats, and Milan dropped a diss track on him too. And Bands also said that Cardi was a farming tool. Need to hold, like, real life, in real life, bro, like, all that rap shit, all that, all that, that ex shit, talking about his song, bro. Besides all that, it He's really a hoe, you know what I'm saying? I don't really, I can't hang around no hoe. But wait, there's even more. 
Bands and Cardi would go back and forth being cool over the years, and in 2020, they were seen in the studio together on Instagram Live, and they made a song called High As Us. However, later the song leaked, and Bands, still in his feelings, said he would replace Cardi on the song with Uzi. Still furious, he also DM'd the count that allegedly leaked the song. He asked, how you get the song? The count replied, DN. Young Bands naively fell for it and asked, who's DN? The fan responded, he's nuts. But that wasn't important. The nail in the coffin was when Young Bands got exposed, and I kid you not, by a meme page, for backdooring Cardi on the internet. Bands DM'd the meme page to make a meme accusing Cardi of plagiarizing, but the meme page was a Cardi fan, so he exposed Bands for asking meme pages to make and repost memes that suggest he carried Playboy Cardi on a song. So Bands got caught sneak dissing Cardi through internet meme pages. This was 100% of Young Bands' fault, and surprisingly Cardi was the good guy, which if you're a fan of Cardi, you know the bar isn't exactly set too high. On top of all of that, the song never came out, and Bands even paid Cardi 100,000 for the feature, so Cardi did end up getting his revenge. However, Bands wasn't just beefing with his fellow rappers from Atlanta. He also decided to beef with anyone else he felt like, the first being Russ. From 2017 to 2018, Russ was a community punching bag for SoundCloud rappers like Lil Pump, and Young Bands decided to take a couple of jabs himself, calling Russ trash and a lot of other names that would get you in trouble. Bands was talking tough, saying things like, Russ, you don't want no smoke. Yeah. No smoke. And claiming that Russ was soft. Literally, Russ was the guest feeling butthurt. He was feeling sad like Lil Xan. He was trolling him. He was on some sad sh But Ben's big bro told him to lay off and apologize and said Russ's feelings were hurt and that Russ wanted to settle it over the phone. Ben thought to himself, like, bro, I really don't give a He's like, you know what I'm saying? We troll him, but know that. Who, who cares, bro? Mm. But he got his number and began talking. And after speaking, he felt bad and. Yeah, as a real. I understood where he was coming from. So the beef was squashed. We squashed it. Like, we squashed it. You know what I'm saying? We squashed it. He tweeted, just got off the phone with at Russ, and it's all love. Sometimes you gotta put yourself in other person's shoes as a real one. It's quiet for the Russ. He hit me as a real person and let me know his view on this, and I respect it, so it's dead. And Russ co-signed it with prayer hand emojis. However, fans thought Bands did it out of fear, not because he was trying to do the right thing. Because earlier, Russ made an appearance on The Breakfast Club in which he threatened to release embarrassing videos of Smoke Perp and Bands. And after Russ released a video of Smoke Perp catching a fatal case of the beats, fans thought Bands was next and believed Bands only made made up because he was afraid of Russ. So the next day, Bands dissed him again. But then like the next day, you didn't really feel the same way? Got it. <laughs> Got it. And explained he wasn't scared of Russ. What pissed me off, the, like, the fans came out like, oh, Bands is um scared of Russ. That's why he did mm -hmm. that. Bro, I don't give a Russ. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, I don't give a about none of that. You literally like called me and begged me like, Basically, just had the internet stop trolling you like. And he made one of the best excuses I've ever witnessed. He claimed his manager hacked him and changed all his passwords and made the announcement, y'all not gonna believe what happened yesterday. My manager hacked me and changed my passwords and tweeted out saying it's not F Russ anymore because he felt I should squash the beef. SMH, my true one of one fans know I ain't scared of no one. F Russ for life. I would never betray my fans. We stand on 10. And afterwards, took multiple more shots at Russ, calling Russ a female dog, trash, and that Russ should be in jail. While this was all going on, Bands was also steaming hot in the rap game, but he was reckless and was getting into beefs left and right, something that today, fans don't remember or realize how negatively this really affected him. He'd even diss Lil Xan and commented on his Instagram, L, your new name Russ Jr. And once again, he dissed Zan because of his ego. They made a song together and Lil Zan didn't repost it on his Instagram story. You did a song with him or something at some point and then you just randomly oh, yeah. on Twitter said like, I wish I didn't do that song with Lil Zan. He didn't post a song. Oh. So Bands claimed Zan was fake. You gotta oh. stop showing fake love, bro. Mm. This rap is just too oversaturated with fake Bro. and that he never should have done a song with him. Another beef fans would get into was with Offset, who allegedly gave him the beats for talking about Cardi B, his wife. On Offset's Instagram story, he said, after I got in the mall, I would talk smack too. They don't tell you that part, how they got washed and sacked. So something definitely went on between them in the mall. And this incident prompted a troll from Bands, a video where he showed his face and said he wasn't touched by Offset. My face. Do it look like I got left out bad and bullshit. And also told Cardi B to check her DM. Check Cardi B, check Bands had said he liked to engage in certain endeavors with Cardi B, Offset's wife, for the culture, and to poke more fun at them showed off a wire end chain, the Migos slogan, inferring he had their chains.
This was very foolish as Young Bands was on supervised house arrest and mentioning Offset's family wasn't a smart idea because that's usually when people take things to the next level. And you have to remember that at this time, the Migos were at the top of rap in their prime and Bands being from Atlanta, if Offset wanted to do something, he could've. But Bands wasn't just beefing with rappers, he was also scamming his fans and it wasn't a single occurrence, he was doing it all the time and there were two notable instances where he scammed teenage fans for large sums of money. The first fan he scammed was a 16 year old fan of his. Bands responded to a fan's message and said he needed 2000 for a feature from the fan. After the money was sent, Bands told him he had to send 200 more because Bands had responded to him, so he charged a speaking fee. Months went by and after many requests, the fan never got the feature or his money back. He was played. The next fan Bands scammed was also young and it was for $2500. After the money was sent, Bands ghosted the fan, so the fan contacted Bands manager who explained that the fans should have contacted the manager first, not Bands, admitting that Bands couldn't be trusted to do business, which was kind of funny. The manager did resolve the issue but sent a recycled verse to the fan and after receiving tons of backlash online, Bands manager refunded the fan so that the fan would take down the expose. The next rapper Young Bands got into beef with was Lil Yachty. It began with Bands teasing his new album Misunderstood and Yachty thought he was copying him. So he tweeted, Misunderstood is literally an imprint of teenage emotions. Bands said, you a whole farming tool and your music will never sound like mine. What is teenage emotions? Sweet boy. Yachty then tweeted, at Young Bands, you my son, stop trying to be me. Bands said, Misunderstood finna be better than your last three albums though. During during this beef, the academics chimed in and called Bands slow, saying, Misunderstood is literally an imprint of teenage emotions. The beef ended when Lil Yachty showed DMs of young bands showing love to him, trying to link up with him, congratulating him, sending him music to hop on, and even wishing him a happy birthday. Young Bands even told Yachty he was trying to be like him one day, even glazing him, talking about how much jewelry Yachty had back in 2017. Yachty then said, y'all go get that misunderstood though, sound emoji. Bands then told Yachty, at Lil Yachty, you sold 29k and you got 9 million followers. I don't know why you was ever laughing, kid, sound emoji. Which wasn't a good look for what was coming for Bands. And if you look at the two album covers, they do look pretty similar. Some of the people in Yachty's album were even put in Bands' album cover. And as a fan of both artists, I'd have to say neither of the albums were in insane so no one really won this beef and later on band said yadi was just being soft i feel like it wasn't even it still it still was a joke just take shit overly offensively when they hate but Adam 22 someone much older than bands tried to check him and warned him to be careful with beefing with others but you're kind of too big to just be like talking shit about somebody and thinking it ain't gonna turn into something like you're out here still acting like you're just like a regular dude like people ain't gonna give a fuck if you just because like calling some random dude in the comments is like that everybody who ain't famous gets to do that and nobody thinks about it but once you're famous then all of a sudden it's a thing unfortunately bands didn't take this advice he was just but i'm telling you adam i'm still a regular dude bro <laughs> The Yachty beef was pretty embarrassing for Bands, but even worse than the beef was the fact that Bands had chosen to beef with Academics, who Bands was actually cool with at one point, and they even had a live stream together. But unlike Yachty, Academics was not going to let Bands' disrespect go, and took advantage of Bands' misfortune. Bands claimed he didn't like how Academics would only post negative news. Is it the same, uh, same energy with Academics? You know, the number one media source, you know what I'm saying, one of the number one media sources to do like, in this rap he throwing a lot of salt he throwing salt mm. he throwing accusations academics told bands his music would flop call the trash and much more what's ironic is band said as soon as he hit you with, the, with some facts you know what i'm saying mm. like, like them the people who argue the best like them the people who make people like go crazy and when Bands' album flopped and failed to make the Billboard 200, Academics came with the facts. On July 24th of 2019, Young Bands dropped Misunderstood, and after one week, it didn't even sell 4,000 units. The album had features from Gunna, Lil TJ, XXXTentacion, Young Thug, Future, Nav, and Lil Durk. Future had originally tweeted a message of congrats and pointed out that Young Bands did this without a major label, because Bands was independent. However, this didn't turn out how Bands thought it would. The pitfall of being independent was Bands didn't have the help most artists have access to to boost their sales. But that didn't matter. To the public, he had flopped, and academics would go on a tweet spree clowning Young Bands, saying, Young Bands failed to sell 10k first week with Misunderstood, despite acting fake independent. By the way, he's actually signed to a major. Y'all can't stop that lie. And also, having features from Gunna, Lil TJ, XXXTentacion, Young Thug, Feature, Nav, and Lil Dirk flopped. Young Bands could have used academics to help him get favorable coverage, but instead he burned a bridge. And it actually turned out that he had tried to recruit academics because academics had showed that Bands had DM'd him asking academics to help promote Misunderstood on his page and called Bands bipolar. Furthermore, Bands was receiving hate for putting a voice memo of XXXTentacion as a feature, and academics called him out for that as well. Bands, well, he didn't have a response, and the curse of DJ academics 
academics moves on. And the week after, Bands finally took some accountability after a member of his team spoke to him. In an interview with Genius, he said, Ebony, she's a part of my team and we talk all the time. She called me one day and she was just like, yo, all that beefing and stuff, you're just so talented. I don't want it to distract everyone from the music. He continued, so actually, now that I think about it, it does a little bit, Bands said. And after what followed, it was evident Bands realized too late. On December 3rd of 2019, in a miraculous turn of events, Young Bands had beat his M-word case. He shared a video of him without his ankle monitor and in good spirits, saying, Just got off house arrest and beat my case after 4 years. I think it's time for me to set up a tour. Where y'all want me to come? And in a statement to XXL, Bands made it clear he was ready to go up. This is the start of a new life for me. I got nothing holding me back. I want to thank my family and all my fans for keeping me sane during this whole situation. Now, it's time to go up. But it didn't go how he wanted. Right after he got off of house arrest, the lockdowns began, and he was back stuck in the house. So Bands wasn't able to capitalize off of his newfound freedom. In fact, ever since he got off of house arrest, Bands stopped releasing music. In fact, he's only released three songs of his own since Misunderstood, and the last time he dropped his own single was in 2021, two years ago. There were a couple of times where he could have dropped some singles with potential, such as his song with Cardi, but that fell through, and he never released it with Uzi. There was a point in time where him and Yeet were gonna drop a song as well, but that fell through too. Furthermore, in 2022, Young Bands was allegedly exposed for dry snitching on one of his co-defendants. One of Bands' friends, Trap Trill, took to Instagram and explained he'd been locked up since 2016 for someone who he never saw in his life, Young Bands, because Bands went to the police and cooperated, including Trap Trill's name. And Trap Trills only spared Bands because Bands was paying for his lawyer, calling Bands a P-word and a snitch. Bands had previously shouted out Trap Trill in songs. Mess with solid guys, no my guys never tell, free Trap Trill, they done gave my brother hell. However, it turned out Bands didn't actually snitch, he just stopped paying for Trap Trill's lawyer, but the snitching allegations remained. So at the end of the day, Young Bands made more than a few blunders in his path to stardom, and that's why it never happened. So in 2023, Young Bands has probably missed out on his chance to make it big in rap, but he still has a loyal underground fan base, and I think a comeback is possible. My name is Rishav Fashir, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.